Hey guys, it's nice and warm outside today, which is really strange because it's the middle of December. But anyway, um, I thought I'd make this video outside in the shed today. Now, the door is closing. Hang on a second. Stick my screwdriver in the ground to keep the door open. Now, this is not a ceiling fan video, despite that I have the camera pointed up at the Hampton Bay Gazebo here. And that's because the shed is currently in storage mode for the winter. So we've got like a uh, hula hoops chandelier. This is the chandelier that used to be in our kitchen. Um, it's waiting in here to be installed whenever we move. Um, this video is not about this. This video is about this. And what this is, maybe I should close the door. That might make it less exposure. Oh yeah, that's much better. What this is, is this is a very big old window fan. It's an exhaust fan. Um, and something really strange about this fan. I have no idea who made it. Yeah. Um, there's no manufacturing markings on it anywhere. Um, and it's just a big, a big metal thing. Um, very heavy. Um, and, yeah, I have no idea who made it. Um, now, the story behind this fan is this fan came into my Habitat Restore that I volunteer at. It came in two weeks ago, or not two weeks ago, um, last week, yeah. And they threw it in the scrap immediately. It's like, oh, this thing's old and filthy and disgusting, so we're going to throw it in the scrap. Well, I took it out and plugged it in, and it worked perfectly fine, other than needing some oil. But, um... It's, uh, I took it out and I said, um, I'm going to take this with me. However, I couldn't take it home that day because I took the small car and it didn't fit in that car. So I had to, um, I had to leave it there for a week. And I really was hoping that somebody wouldn't just toss it in the scrap thinking I wasn't going to come back for it. Um, and luckily I came back the next week, which was this past Saturday, and it was still there, and it, somebody had put it on the sold shelf, so, um, they, because they knew that I was going to be taking it, um, and, well, I took it home with me that day, because I took the big car, and now, now it's just sitting in my shed. This fan is actually going to be my very first restoration project, which is pretty interesting. I've never done a full-blown restoration project. Now, I've cleaned up fans before, just cleaning, oiling, you know, all that kind of stuff. But this is actually going to be a complete restoration because, as you can see, it's in pretty just terrible shape. Um, the paint is peeling everywhere. It's filthy. It needs, it just needs everything so bad. Um, so let's take a look at the other side of the fan. Let me turn it around. If I can do this with one hand because this thing weighs like 40 pounds. Um, so here's the back of the fan. Notice how uniquely shaped it is. I've seen other fans like this that have this wire mesh, a very similar wire mesh cage like this. Um, but they kind of go out straight and then curve down like that. They don't go in like this, like a prism, kind of. Really weird. Um, then these supports right here. So and at first I thought it was homemade or something, but if it was homemade, I mean, whoever did this obviously knows their, obviously knows their stuff. But I don't think it is homemade. Um, now on the inside, you can see right there is the motor itself. And it is a quarter horsepower Delco motor. Um, yeah. It's got a label on the side, which I'll show you all in a minute. Um, yeah, it's a huge motor. Uh, might be a little overpowered for this type of fan, but, you know. There's the motor pulley right there with the belt attached. And the belt runs up to the blade, and that, that's the blade stand right there. The blade stand is fastened to the the front and the back, but it's not fastened to the back. The side is fastened to the bottom. So that's really weird. Um, uh, the motor itself is also fastened to the 
side and the bottom right there with a strap there and then it's just simply screwed on the other side um, yeah so the blade stand is right here and then on the back of the blade stand you can see the bearings the blade bearings there's a shaft that runs through there's a bearing right here and a bearing right there and I'm not sure but I think hang on they're probably are they I can't tell if those are ball bearings or not I think they're just brass or uh, porous bronze bearings, but still very weird. I've never seen bearings like this in one of these fans. So the ones I've seen have all been a single piece of like sleeve bearing of uh, just a, a regular sleeve bearing, like a, made of porous bronze, and just they've just been bare. This is really weird. Um, now uh, the bearings themselves. Actually, what's really strange is the bearings themselves. Also, the bearings uh, themselves have these oil caps on top, and they're actually little snap caps. That's really cool. Um, i just reach around the side here and just show you. They're spring-loaded, as you can see. And there is a marking on the top of each of the snap caps. It says PAT, patent, I guess. Um, brush, B-R-U, I can't read it. Um, this one might no, maybe not. Um, it says C H I. Oh, that's upside down. I can't even read it. Um, if you want to try to read that on top of that snap cap right there, if autofocus for me, autofocus is not working. Whatever. Anyway, um, if I, when I clean it off, it'll probably show up better. But um, the belt itself is an automotive belt. It's made in the USA. You can clearly see right there, so it's old. Um, I don't know if I'm going to replace the belt or not, because, I mean, it seems to be in good condition. But if I get a new one, it'll probably um, be better. Although this belt looks pretty new. I don't know. Maybe this belt was replaced. This belt might not be original. I don't know. Um, another thing, in relation to the bearings with the snap caps for the oil oil the, on top of the oil cups there's also snap caps on the motor to oil the motor bearing which is really cool I just thought that's so weird um, you know just shows you that this was built with quality clearly um, but yeah so anything else that I'm you to see um, oh yeah I'll turn it around I'll show you the front of the big enormous fan so on the front here, you just ran into a beach chair hanging from the ceiling. Um, on the front, you can see right here, it's got the shroud around the blades, the Venturi shroud, um, and that really helps with airflow. Um, it's got a three-bladed blade set, um, and the blades themselves are separate from the blade hub. Um, and it looks as though... No, I thought that was a bolt. That's just the shaft because it's held on by an Allen wrench or Allen screw. Um, now there's this little hole right here, and what that's for is that's for oiling. Because right on the other side of that, you can see in there the snap cap on top of the motor uh, bearing housing. So yeah, and also the cord. This is a single speed fan, which is another reason why I thought it was homemade. Because most of the ones I've seen have a knob like right here, somewhere on the top or the side, that allow you to change speeds, but this is a single speed fan, it's directly wired, there's a cord running through a rubber grommet, through the wire mesh cage, and going up to a housing right there. The cord itself is this thick, heavy duty, uh, just heavy duty industrial type cord, and there's an inline uh, switch made by Snap-It, um, very old switch, it's Bakelite. Um, it says Underwriters Laboratories, uh, Made in USA, Snap It, which is the company that made it. Um, I've seen other Snap It devices. I actually have a Snap It outlet. Um, but the plug, this is what's so so weird. The plug, so you got this heavy duty cord here. Take a look at the plug. It's just a simple two pronged, non polarized plug with a cardboard thing at the end of it. That is just so weird. I'd rather put a, I'm probably going to keep the cord, just have to clean it and the uh, inline switch, but 
I'm going to replace this plug with a three-pronged plug because it needs it. That motor needs to be grounded. I have it plugged into a power strip. In case anything happens, it'll trip the breaker on the power strip and not the breaker in the shed. Um, so now, also, I need to show you the, the label on the motor. Um, there's the motor right there, as I mentioned. It's a Delco. Zoom in. You can kind of see it. Not very well. Hang on, I've got a um, flashlight on my phone. Maybe this will help. Okay. Oh yeah, that's much better. So you can see it says Delco motor. Made in USA. Uh, 40 degrees Celsius rise model. I can't really read it. A5860, I think. 120 volts, 60 cycles, AC. 1,750 RPM. Wow, that's pretty good. One quarter horsepower. How many amps is that? 0.5 it looks like. It's pretty efficient, I guess. Um, or maybe that's just 5 amps. Not 0.5. I don't know if there's a point there. It has a wiring diagram down there. Yeah. It says um, Delco Products Division of uh... N E Neural Motor Gen General Motors Corporation. Oh, Delco Products General Motors Corporation. That's interesting. So that was made by General Motors. Pretty cool. Um, and um, you can see the other side of the belt pulley right there and the bearings. The thing, now, this is completely before I rest, restored it or anything. I haven't really done anything to it. I did oil the bearings a little bit, but I think it needs some more oil. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a demonstration. I'm going to turn the snap it switch on and turn the power cord on, and you're going to see it start up. The fluorescent light didn't like that voltage suck. It dimmed for a second there, but now it's running. It's actually pretty quiet once it gets up to speed. It's vibrating a little bit, and the motor's making a clicking sound with every revolution. So that's going to need some adjusting, but it's definitely blowing a very good breeze. As you can see the stuff blowing around there. Very powerful fan. Yeah. Notice my... everything's blowing. I can see everything like moving towards it and then getting blown through the front. And that uh, Venturi shroud really helps with the airflow, as I mentioned. Instead of sucking the air from the sides in, it just sucks air from the back in. So, whoa. That was something falling, I think. That scared me. Um, let's see. Here's what it looks like from the back when it's running. You can see the motor pulley turning and the belt blade pulley spinning. Yeah. Notice how the uh, blade stand is kind of vibrating. I think the blades might be slightly out of balance. Yeah, they are. I can see them. I'm going to need to fix that. Um, so now I will turn it off and we'll check the spin down. Now being a belt fan, it doesn't have the best spin down. But I feel like I can make that spin down better by oiling the blade bearings and probably the motor bearings need some oil as well. But uh, I think that's about everything that I have to offer for this video. So this is completely before restoration. What Next time you see this fan, it should be totally different. So that is the mystery belt drive window fan with the Delco motor. Um, now if I had to guess on when this was made, I'd say maybe in the 50s or 60s. I honestly have no idea. I'm probably completely wrong. Um, and I have no idea who, who it was made by, yeah. So that's the... It could be made by Delco, you never know. Uh, but I've looked up online. Delco made some uh, desk fans. And they made a window fan, but it was not a big industrial belt drive window fan. It was a direct drive uh, twin window fan, like the GE standard ones. So that is the mystery window fan. Um, thanks for watching, and more to come.